Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. As you can see, I'm right in Sector 7 and as, as you might also recognize, uh, I finished last episode after uh, finishing Task 6. Unfortunately, my recording program crashed in the middle of the last recording, so uh, somewhat after uh, Task 8. So I'm going to repeat task 7 and 8 now and then uh, continue with task 9 and 10. Uh, I try to explain what I did in the tasks uh, to, to make clear how I uh, arrived at the result. So for the first task, um, the, the, uh, task is the exercise is pretty clear. It was supposed to remove all the vowels from the input string so uh, what I did, it was defining an input string uh, result, which is the empty string, and then for uh, every character C in the input converted to char array, um, we return in case that um, this contains a character or better does not contain a character so if this is smaller zero then we append c to our result and return the result the task is pretty clear this solution if i did not type anything wrong should work but we did do not get the full skill rating for this solution but to be honest I did not find uh, a solution that gives us the full skill rating neither on the Java side nor on the C sharp side um, apparently I'm overlooking something so if you have any ideas uh, any hints on how to do this better feel free to give me um, a hint, drop me a comment, tell me how I can uh, implement this in a shorter way that gives me the full skill rating. For now let's continue on to the next task. Um, this was a tricky one, it actually took me a while to figure that out. We get an input string and we get two additional strings A, B and C and we're supposed to return a boolean so we're supposed to check some conditions. And from what you can see here is that we're supposed to return true if the string, cont the input string contains only a's nine at a time, and we have a a and a as uh, our two additional strings. Strings we're supposed to return true if we have a string that starts with a b and then uh, contains only a's, and we have b b b. We're supposed to return false and uh, for again 9 times a and these combinations we're supposed to return true so my first my first guess is where to check for some um, substrings composed of these two but actually um, the result the what we expected to check is input uh, starts with a and B contains uh, occurs somewhere in the string, so it input uh, index of B is greater or equal to zero, and then we have the input end with C, and this is the condition we want to check here. It really took me quite some time to figure that out. Uh, luckily, you don't have to endure. Uh, this long session of trial and error to get to the right uh, solution um, since this is the the correct solution and as you can see it also gives me the full skill rating so this is the best solution I could come up with okay now well, let's continue on to the next task so this is new ground for me now I have no clue how to solve these tasks so let's jump right into it we have uh, two inputs, an integer and a string. We're supposed to return a string. And in case an integer is th a 3 and the string is 3a's, we're supposed to return 
3 times 3 A's uh, separated with uh, a space. Unfortunately, there's no uh, no join method in native Java, so we're going to have to implement this ourselves. Say string result uh, is the empty string, and for um, actually I don't need to define i as long as i is bigger than zero. I minus minus. Um, we're going to append to the result our input string s and if i is bigger than 1 we're also going to return uh, to append a space here and then of course you're going to return result it's unexpected there is of course a semicolon missing here. Now this should hopefully compile and will hopefully be the correct solution, although I'm not sure whether this will be the best possible solution. Um, but if it isn't, I already have another idea how we could actually um, implement this maybe with a string constructor but um, the string constructor there's a constructor that takes a number and repeats uh, the input but I'm not sure currently if this uh, constructor takes a whole string or only uh, a single character as an input but we'll find out in a second so what I could do is say new string of string and i which is string concatenated with a space and then do a trim and return this one I'm not entirely sure but this might work no it does not work because the string constructor takes only uh, a character as an input, so I have to go back to my previous solution. Um, but actually, the idea with the trim I can use and do it like that, so it's at least a little shorter, but probably not short enough, concise enough to uh, get the full skill rating. We'll find out in a couple of seconds. Um, if that should not work, what else could we do to generate this string? I'm actually not sure what I could do. So, since this is taking a while, I'm going to fast forward to the result. And here it is, and funnily enough, I get the full scale rating for this solution, so uh, I don't have to bother with finding another more concise solution. So let's continue on to the next task, which is, as far as I know, the last uh, task of this sector. And uh, it tells us in this duel you are printing the letters in the English alphabet. So obviously we're somehow supposed to uh, output the letters of the alphabet with a space between each letter. What I'm not sure yet is how to interpret this T parameter because it's one in this case. Maybe I'm supposed to iterate with the alphabet multiple times but for now let's just uh, make this a loop say int i is 0 i is smaller supposed to be 26 isn't it uh, i plus plus and then just append um, the character that is a plus i and then closing this here, this should 
Uh, no, it does not. It, it misses the the space, of course. So there's a space supposed to be, and then again a trim here at the end to remove the additional space uh, at the end of the string. Let's see what happens. Hopefully now I'll get an output for another um, for another alphabet. And in fact, it's as I uh, thought it might be. We're supposed to do that for um, as many times as we get the T input. So what I could do here is do a nested uh, nested loop and say as long as this is bigger than zero, T minus minus, and repeat this in a loop. I'm curious to see what the the skill rating tells us for this solution, but at least it should work. So, but it does not work. Why doesn't it work? Um, looks interesting. So, in the expected result, there's a Y missing. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Y, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Z. There's the Y missing. Why the heck is the Y missing here? Okay, so somehow in the second iteration of the outer loop, there's something that's that went missing. So it's a, it's not an, exactly a suffix that went missing, but the previous thing. Um, and apparently in the first iteration nothing went missing. In the second iteration, um, actually the last three. If I count the space, the last. Four Four characters, but the Z is preserved. So how about doing a substring from zero to output length minus T times two and then appending a Z again. What's happening now? In the first case, this should remove exactly the space and the the space and the Z, and then append only the Z again. That should work. In the uh, next case, it's supposed to return to subtract four characters, which is space Z, space Y, and then append the Z. But apparently, I did something wrong here. Apparently I did something wrong here because I duplicated um, I duplicate the Z so somehow this substring thing is not working yet and I'm not completely sure why it does not work. Um, so apparently it looks like I'm not doing any substring I'm not removing anything with my substring logic uh, of course because I count down uh, the T so T is zero at the end so I remove nothing uh, okay let's work around this by copying T and work on j and the copy here then this might work Now the first works again, the second works. Let's see, now there should be probably a 3 as input. No, there's not, because he decided my solution is correct, but it's not that skill, so let's see how we can pimp this up a little. In fact, since we're computing static output here, I would resolve to say output plus 
equals a b c d g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u uh, v w w x y z space so maybe this is a little nicer now in, in C sharp we could use something like a range here and then do string join which would probably be a nicer solution but removing the second inner loop already get us the full skill points for this task so I'm going to continue and as I said this was the last task of sector 7 so this actually completes the strings area and the next time we're going to continue with the nested loops. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching anyways. If you liked it, uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you get any other feedback, let me know also. If you want, you can also follow me on Twitter and have a look at the other things I'm doing. See you next time.